It was like a Titanic moment in the middle of the bed and the water just rise. The victims of the weekend's devastating storms as the mop-up continues. <laughs> Renaming a street in Johannesburg to honor Winnie Madikizela Mandela as her granddaughter passed away. I lose my man, my food, my clothes, the blankets. Unfortunately, everything. I lose everything. Rebuilding after a fatal fire in Cemetery View informal settlement. Hello, I'm Jane Dutton. Remember to like and subscribe. This is Eyewitness News. Where are you, baby? Mopping up after the Western Cape's deadly storms. The heavy rains and wild waters led to some people losing their lives. Eight of them were electrocuted in Cape Town. Damages and stuff like all my cupboards, everything, my clothes, shoes, all my appliances, everything. Everything is damaged. Hundreds of homes were flooded, cars swept away, sometimes with people in them, and infrastructure destroyed. A lot of roads still closed. We managed to open one lane here and there, like Salori's Pass, but also caution people that they must drive safely because it's slow moving traffic. Um, we realize the importance of opening roads and trying to get people back to their homes. Um, city of Cape Town currently more or less 1,500 structures affected, 6,000 people. In Breda Valley, 2,000 families been cut off in the Gigi camp. Um, so uh, DSD, SASA, um, the teams are out there trying to get to them and to support them. Um, Overall, in the Cape Winers, around about 200 to 2,588 affected structures. Um, currently, a need for 588 displaced people. McGregor Town remains cut off, and many roads and passes are still closed. There are a number of roads, however, that are still closed. The N1 at Orchards and Sand Hills, all traffic is still being diverted from Worcester in the direction of Toes River and from Toes River in the direction of Worcester via Cirrus. And then McGregor is completely cut off at this stage. Uh, attention is being given there and the Franschhoek Pass is still closed. Disaster management teams along the garden route are on standby as a storm system looms over the region. And more rain is heading towards Nelson Mandela Bay too. Construction in the middle of devastation. Shacks are going up again in the Cemetery View informal settlement in East Pretoria, as flimsy and flammable as the ones that were destroyed in Saturday's fire. I come back, I see everything. It's gone like you see. I lose my man, my food, my clothes, the blankets. Unfortunately, everything. I lose everything. The fire wiped out every single home here. About 2,000 people have been displaced and are refusing to relocate. The city of Tuana said some residents had rejected its attempts to help with temporary accommodation. <laughs> William Nickel Drive is no more. The four kilometer stretch of road is now called Winnie Mandela Drive, named after the struggle stalwart who would have turned 87 today. The city of Johannesburg says the renaming is part of its mission to remove the legacy of apartheid. The mother of the nation and freedom fighter. Nicole was the second chairperson of the Afrikaner Broederbund, a white nationalist organization credited with the formulation of apartheid. Many ask if the resources could have been better spent elsewhere, fixing potholes, hospitals, arresting Joburg's decay. Gauteng Premier Panyazele Sufi says that question will persist unless the government takes better care of its infrastructure. This street is not about Mamuini Nomzamu Matikizela Mandela. This street is about all of us. This is just a symbol of who we are and where we come from. If we had a choice, this street will carry all the names of our leaders. To name this street after her doesn't mean we hate other leaders or we don't recognize them. But Mama Winnie was too special and her teachings deserve our support and the naming of this street. Today's name change is the backdrop to the passing of Madikizela Mandela's granddaughter. Author and activist Zoleka Mandela died yesterday after a long battle with cancer. 
She was 43. Mandela was very open about her battle with cancer, often giving updates on her treatment journey. She also shared her fight with mental illness and substance abuse. Getting a top crime intelligence unit is a process that requires time. 90 new members have now been deployed to 30 of the country's top police stations. We need to make sure that everyone who comes in there is properly vetted. We don't want to employ people and only to remain with an egg on our face where we find that we employ someone and at the later stage we find that this person is involved in some criminal activities or was not supposed to have been appointed in specific posts. Crime intelligence were recently given the green light by Parliament to use certain technology in their fight against crime. And that's it from me today. See you for more again tomorrow. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.